Welcome back to the home garage. This is the last project. I don't want to say it's the last ever, but it's the last of the vision that we put together for, uh, for, for this garage. And so it's backsplash, wiring for the audio system, put some rear speakers in, uh, and then wiring for like battery charging and stuff like that. So I got all my shelves in the closets organized the way I want them. Uh, and so we've gotten our extra pieces from our friends at Blue Tree, our custom tops. Uh, so we made a really cool custom shelf here. Uh, so we're doing shelf, TV, center channel, um, and then electrical. So we're doing all the electrical stuff. We also have a backsplash to put in. So over the course of the next couple of days, we're gonna work through this system. You gonna be able to punch this thing in there, you think? I think so, yeah. So uh, you, let's, let's come up with a height here. So I'm thinking two inches top of shelf, two inches below this, or you wanna go maybe three? No, I think two. Two? Two inches from top of that to the top two of the shelf. Two right there. Yep. That's, that would be the yep. top of shelf right there. Yep. So when we designed this, when I asked them to put this together, I thought it would look better. So we're gonna float, we're gonna, the shelf is gonna be floating. Uh, and so they put this really stout bracing because that center channel weighs like 60 pounds. Uh, and so we want it floating, but I didn't want any kind of, you know, brackets or anything like that. Uh, and so in order to keep this from warping, we have this, uh, what is this, quarter channel. inch, quarter inch channel. Quarter. Actually, no, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, See, it's like an L or a U. That's a channel. It's a U channel, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so this should not warp. And so this side will face up, and then the finished side faces down. Uh, and then I wanted it to be a little lower than the top of the cabinets and a little inset, so it looks custom. Yeah, it'll look better like that. I don't like, you know, people get real mad at me when I do like the separate heights on cabinets and stuff, but I, I just, it, it. You like things that look defined. Like things are not yeah, but I mean, some people love the symmetry of like your closet height, the same as your cabinet height, but I'm tall. And so I don't want my cabinets here to be too low. Uh, and I like big counter space. So I would rather reach up in my cabinets. Uh, and then in order to do that, you have to sort of lose some of that, that boxy symmetry. But to me, when you stand back and you look at the cabinet array, it just, it doesn't look as boxy to me when you do some height change. And so then, in order to keep that same height change idea, uh, that's why I think this shelf needs to be like that. All right, so I gotta get up here and... I gotta get some tape and lay it out first, and then okay. the and all okay. that, and then you, you can carry okay. on doing what you're doing. Okay, this right. so in this setup, so the way that this, uh, they designed this, so I went full out on this one. So this is, you know, I love organic LED, OLED. Uh, I hate, I don't know why people say OLED. You don't say LED, it's LED. I don't understand that, it doesn't make any sense. It makes sense, but I don't like it. So the TV is Sony Master Series, the Z9J, because the current 2023 version is the Z9K. Uh, the Z9K is uh, 6,000 bucks. The Z9J, I think, started out at like eight or 10,000 when it was new. Uh, and I found that B&H had some B stock, or some leftover stock, new stock, but leftover. Uh, that I, so I bought it for 3,000 bucks. Normally I buy like a $1,500 Sony, $2,000 Sony, you know, 75 inch, but uh, I've got the Master Series for three grand, I figure. I love this garage. I'm actually probably gonna stay here for a little while now. Uh, remember the original plan of this house was just get in and get out, but I, I like this place. So we're gonna stay here. And so I went full on on the, uh, the Z9J, the Master Series, and then I'm gonna have it ISF calibrated and all that. So the other lessons I've learned, I love doing this really wide array. So this is 22 feet, I believe, 23 feet wide. And so the problem is when you do 23 feet wide, you're getting outside of the ability to stereo image when you're talking audio. Uh, and so you could put the speakers up higher on the cabinets, but I like them, especially with these awesome uh, heritage specials from Dynaudio. These are like my babies. Like I'll, I'll probably have these for, I don't know. This is like one of the few things I'm collecting and this is one of them. So these speakers I love. The problem is when you're watching any TV, even with the studio monitors or all the setups I've done with the speakers too wide, it's just, you lose the dialogue. And I'm not looking for like critical home theater listening, but in order to timber match roughly the heritage specials, I needed to do the, uh, the Contour 25 CI, the center channel. So I won't tell you how much this was, but uh, there's a lot of monies. 
Uh, but you know, I'll buy it, buy it once, and I can always get my money back because I, I buy and sell this stuff all the time. So um, think of it like, uh, you know, I've got a nice watch here, and I'm a watch dealer. So that's kind of how I justify this stuff. So I get these direct. You know, and, and uh, demo pricing because um, you know the, the the speaker manufacturers want you to own the product. So this is like a fifty-five hundred dollar center, and then a what are these eight thousand dollar pair of bookshelves or something like that. And then I'm going to put a pair of rear speakers in here. But the center channel, what I'm getting at here is the center channel will help pull it all together. It just sounds so much better. Not listening to music, but if I'm watching anything, watching TV, and I do that often out here. So, and then I want it to look cool, and so I did this whole thing. So then I bought this, I don't know how much this cost, but this was probably another thousand bucks to have this thing custom made. Uh, probably 1500 bucks to have it shipped and made and, and brought here. Uh, but uh, I think it'll be worth it in the long run. This is like the ultimate three car garage. So we're kind of putting this together. So then the lesson we learn on the listas, first off, listas are not particularly accurate sizing wise. So we're gonna have to figure out something to do here and that we ordered the countertops based on the you know, list of specs, but we have a 3 8 gap, which freaking sucks. Uh, the other thing we did, I didn't factor in is that we have a stem wall. So there's a little stem wall that sticks out for the, you know, for the house. Uh, and so uh, we have the cabinets like an inch and a half off the wall. Uh, and so that means we built the countertops like we normally would with Sonic. So Sonic, when you put the Sonic together, it all sits standalone. Uh, it doesn't bolt to the wall. This whole setup is bolted, would, you know, or the, at least the, the uppers are bolted to the wall. There's no wire pipes like the Sonic has. So this is a more permanent structure. So the countertops were made for the cabinet specifically, but we have a gap. And so that's why we had a backsplash made. So we did an eight inch, I think that's eight inch tall backsplash, integrated some outlets. Uh, and so normally again, when a sonic array, you just run all your wires behind it and you don't see anything. But because we don't have that in this case, um, we're having to uh, do some more sophisticated wiring. So we have, power for my audio setup. So I'm gonna have dual NAD C298s, one bridged mono, which will give me like 620 watts to the center channel. Uh, the other C298 bridged, or not bridged mono, it'll be just set up in stereo, so I'll get about 320 watts per channel for the Heritage Specials. Uh, and then, you know, because I'm not really using the receiver part of it, I'm doing a T758. Uh, NAD uh, receiver. So these two boxes are gonna go up there in the corner. Uh, so the 758 is a preamp for the front stage uh, and then it'll power the two rear speakers. I'm just doing rears because I can. So we're putting two outlets, two outlets. So I have four outlets up top, four outlets on the middle shelf because the middle shelf is where all my scan grip lighting as well as my battery charging for this camera because uh, I keep, I bought a C70 camera so I have it here in my drawer all the time. So this will be my camera drawer, camera will stay here, my camera's lenses, extra batteries. I want my own camera uh, so Mike and the camera guys can have their cameras and I have my own camera so I can keep it dust free, clean and perfect. Uh, I'm letting them use it here today. But we're gonna be doing a lot of washing drives and stuff here as well so it's nice to have an extra camera set up here with uh, charging and all of that because we're gonna be doing a lot more content here in this awesome garage and then the wash bay we build outside. So we gotta run wire all the way across and all that. We're gonna show you all that stuff and then uh, also I need to get power into here to charge my Milwaukee batteries. So single outlet here, single outlet, or quad, we're doing quads just so I have excess extra in case. So outlets there for my, um, for my ego stuff. And then uh, my subwoofer is gonna park here in the corner. Um, I could have set up the cabinets to have enough room to put the sub over there. I like the sub here because it's loaded on the stem wall. So the concrete wall and the concrete stem wall here. So it kind of sends the energy out this way. The sub sounded best here anyway. And we're actually, the wires will run down to the floor and we'll um, you know, notch the swish tracks and make that look all pretty. We also have to do this here as well. So we're gonna do this countertop. Uh, we got the right size because we ordered the wrong one. And then uh, we're doing a really cool paper stone backsplash. 
I know on camera this looks really sterile. It doesn't look quite right. It looks like too much white, like the, the flat white or matte white cabinets on the Harbor Gray is a little bit too much white. Uh, but I knew in the, in the, from the beginning I was going to do a dark uh, walnut wood countertop stained with the dark tanned Rubio Monocoat. Uh, and then a black backsplash, and it's all, I'm telling you, it's all gonna tie together. At least I think it is. So the paper stone backsplash will show you that as well. So no big deal. Uh, another thing you haven't seen since the last time, these drawers are a little bit too deep uh, for the sonic foam inlays. And so I got these dividers. So that's why all this stuff is here. So I got a flat divider. So that way when, I, when Mike comes in here and starts rifling through drawers, it, my tools don't slide around and it makes me happy. So I have to, I have to put in uh, mic measures in order to keep my, uh, keep my tools where I want them. He knows that. And then I did this for these so they can't slide around so it stays. Because these, you know, these are sonic foam inlays made specifically for the sonic stuff, but this is um, um, a little bit deep, just a tad deeper. It's really close, but just a tad deeper. So we're going to figure all that out and check this out. So master collection, everything's set up where we need it. It's freaking awesome. I wish we could disable the stupid. I hate having one drawer only. I need to like cut the darn thing off the back or something. And so we have all the, the whole, this whole section is master collection. What I'm doing next after we get done with this project, I'm going to organize these drawers with, um, that's a Milwaukee pack out, but I'm going to organize the drawers with, um, Remember, we also have a bunch of hardware in the uh, yeah. outside that I haven't these brought are, in yet. These wood screws are beefy, so I want to use these. And um, this is going to be all uh, set up with uh, lags. I'm going to buy a bunch of lags and all that stuff. So this place is going to be looking good. So we have sonic foam inlays, foam inlays. These two drawers here, I still have a bunch of Milwaukee stuff, um, like uh, you know house stuff, like uh, where I'm going to tool grid this all out. But I'm waiting on some more tape measures and stuff like that. You need more. Need me. <laughs> need, need a nice assortment of tape measures. Tape measure? Yes, I have seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's the way to go. All my cutting utensils and all that stuff. So, yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be looking good. Actually, I have to ask Drew about that. Let me let me call him right now. So the upper cabinets have a they have a wire chase. Like the bottom shelf comes off. But we want to do under cabinet lighting, and my solution, if this doesn't work, is that we're going to have to like slot the darn thing. So I'm hoping this solves our problem. You always have to be in the middle of the action, bro, don't you? The very curious little bro. No, 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 don't do that. This is not for you, buddy. This looks really long. Is this like gonna carry the whole? That looks like a It is. If it goes to the whole front edge, one piece instead of three individual pieces. All right. That, that's nice. And then there's a return on this side. Okay, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Chase, Chase. Cut it out, man. He doesn't eat, he just likes to chew it up. Make a mess. He's not swallowing. Cut it out, buddy. That's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for a mess. Yep, this is gonna solve our problem here. Nice. It's all coming together, Michael. The sophisticated gentleman having a little, uh, little Waterloo black cherry. It's good for the palate. That's, I'm gonna make a t-shirt. Less money, more problems. Less money, more stuff, more problems. But I got a Waterloo. You like those better than the other ones you were doing? It was buy one, get one free. You know me, I'm a bargain hunter. Yeah, you are a bargain hunter. Did you get that at Walmart? The bargain? <laughs> yeah. Publix, bro. <laughs> this is what gets me. Michelle goes to freaking Sam's Club and buys a case of these. And I'm like, I only just have 12 of these. Especially when you haven't had lunch. And you come home and you just want a quick 
Mm -hmm. And there's only four in a little pouch. Before I know it, I've eaten freaking 20 of them. The whole box. I don't think the kids ate any of them. I probably ate the you whole ate thing. You fruit roll-ups too? Mm-hmm. I don't even like them. I eat them anyway. <sighs> it's the story of my life. So it's a sad story. So what, I you don't do that next side. side. And then you have to hold this side up to right the fish. I'll, we'll set it on there. Okay. And then you're going to have to get over here. So you might as well, well start over here. Well, why, why don't we do that side first? Okay, bring it. You know, you know what I'm saying? No, I mean like... We screw the that kicks, side the, in. The kicks, yeah, I'll so hold. We only have to just rest it on here. So what I'm saying is and I'm I'll be, screw this side. Yeah, and so I'll be over there holding it while you're screwing. So why are you over there? That's what I'm saying. I'm going to lift it up to put it up here first. And then we're going to switch sides. Why don't you just start over? We're going to lift it up, put it here. I'm going to walk that way, and then you're coming up. Okay. I mean, somebody's got to lift it over onto the kickstand. Well, that's what I was saying. Okay. It should, it should just go. You gotta push your end in the back. Push, put back. There you go. Now, you got it. Should go. It's close. I know. It's very close. There's like a little lip here. Mm. Oh, the sheet metal lip? Yeah. Hold on. Okay. That's a pretty sweet idea. Did I come up with this idea? No, I did. That's right. You can have it. Are you yeah. sure? Yes, I'm positive. Uh, I don't know. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> I like how you get vague when you're... <laughs> I'm not sure. You're not sure? Well, you came up, you wanted a shelf, and I said, why don't we just screw it to the cap? So, well, yeah, yeah, So it was, yeah, a, yeah. it was a joint effort. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how can we do a floating shelf. Floating looking shelf. Yeah. Yeah, the shelf is definitely my idea. But I think I'm going to put the Apple TV behind the TV okay, just hide instead it. of on the shelf. Okay, so then we just have two. We'll put that so I have one HDMI with that Apple TV and, one, and, two, one, and two power cords. One HDMI and two power cords? So yeah. Pretty close. I think the Apple TV is going to have to go up what top. What if you put it like on the back side of the angle here? Yeah, I mean, but I, I don't think it's going to fit still. Because we won't have room because we're going to be like a finger off of the shelf. So I think we put it behind the center channel okay. up top. All right, so it's two HDMIs then, a speaker wire and a power wire. Yeah. All right, we are in Matt's garage and we're getting the final touches done. So the countertops came in. We are using black paper stone backsplash that we also got from Blue Tree. So the reason we are doing this backsplash here is because the, well, over there, there's a stem wall that kicks out the cabinets a bit. So by the time you, if you were to shove the, uh, the countertop all the way to the back wall, there would be a gap at the front. So what we chose to do is do a backsplash and then I had them mill out for some outlets and slot the backside so I can run wire through. And then at the very end, there'll be a, a, a terminal for the, for speakers. So get those in. So it's it's a little bit tedious because everything has, it's, this is the final final, you know, fit and finish has to be perfect. So I had to run this through the saw. We're good as far as fitment. So this, this is done. This is what that will look like. Anyway, so a lot of speaker wire, power wire, um, center channels going up here. Now I did put the bracket up for the, for the TV because I was thinking I would trim around that for the paper stone. I'd prefer to mount this to the wall directly, but um, Matt brought up a good point, which is this is a really slim mount. So if I do that, we might not be able to get the TV to hang, fit in. So I'm probably gonna have to pull the screws out and put it and put the paper stone down and then screw it to the paper, through the paper stone into the wall. Um, anyway, so that's what we're working on. Um, so just you were saying about the electrical back here? Yeah, so here, I'll show you what this looks like. So carefully tip it over there we go so I had a mill out for the outlets and then slot here so we can run power and we could run speaker wire two from there into that last pocket which is for a speaker terminal anyway so and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hot glue gun it which is kind of rather than stapling because this is really hard so I'm gonna use some hot some dabs of hot glue to uh, keep the wire in check and then um, 
I think that I'll do this next and then start mocking everything up because I want to get everything perfected before I do a final attachment. And they also, we also ran these are a little long, so I've got to cut the end off probably like half an inch or so. And then, oh, what we did over here too, because I think Matt mentioned on other videos that the cabinets aren't exactly, if you add all the cabinets up, you know, per their catalog, and you come up with a length based on that, they were running a little long. So what we had was a gap here. So what I did was there was a piece of countertop that we had. This is not, this is just mocked up right now. I haven't attached it, but anyway, there was a countertop that they sent that was for a single base cabinet. And we actually ended up putting two because we added the garbage can over there. Um, so anyway, there was a chunk. So I cut a sliver out of that and I'll, I use that as a filler here. So it looks a lot better than a gap. So anyway, that's what we did to fix that. So this is still a little long. We had to run it long because we knew that this was, uh, this was not on size. So what I'll do is I'll do a final cut on one of these or both. And so that way the splice ends right where that splice is there. So you can see here, if I shove this back, it's, it's short on this one, but the other one, it's a little long. So anyway, that was by design so we wouldn't have a gap. Anyway, that's where we are. Matt's in a meeting, so he'll probably be out here tinkering with you. Oh, we did the shelf too. I think we showed that yesterday. So the shelf's done, um, wiring's through, uh, center channel's up there, which is cool. It doesn't look like it's sagging at all. Yeah, so it looks cool. I can't wait to get it done. It's gonna look nice. So I've got to break out the vacuum because uh, I guess Matt uh, drilled some holes last night over here, but he didn't clean up his mess. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up after him. And I'm always having to clean up after old Matty, I tell you. You, th you all think he's really got everything dialed, but sometimes he slips up, you know? But I'll, I'll pick up the slack, you know, no problem. You know, he would do the same for me if I were to make a mess, you know? Which, I don't ever do that, you know? It's under the car here, you can see over here, there's quite a few chips here from, you can see he drilled some holes up here last night for a speaker wire pick. This business here, I'll clean up that thing. There we go. I got you, Matt. No problem. I just don't want to scratch any countertops with all these metal chips here. Yeah, I see inside all oh, this woman here, too. There we go. That taken care of. It's day two. I need them to talk them talk them into um, not putting freaking badges on here, but look how much cleaner it looks. I took let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven badges off the darn thing, and I got one, two, three. I don't know if I'm going to leave one of them on. We'll see. I'll probably last a couple of weeks. I'm going to leave one of them on for now for pictures and stuff. But um, we got, so this one, Mike's got this one done. So countertop is fixed. How, what did you, did you screw this with half inch screws or something? Through, yes, I did. Yeah, so Pre-drilled and uh, used three inch cabinet screws. And then uh, what about this? Well, we'll show them over there, but. On the, what, what are we talking about? The, so this piece is just. That's screwed. It's screwed, screwed through, through the cabinet, up oh. in, I mean through the uh, Did you glue counter. it? Didn't have to. Oh, yeah. And then what about this? That's, that's uh, extra strength liquid nails. Okay. And you just put a thick bead so it can mm -hmm. squish in there. Yep. We'll show you guys on when we do the, the other part over here. Uh, but I'm getting these off. And then what I was working on last night. So, so that's how the center channel is going to live. I didn't factor in how deep that darn center channel is. So that's like touching the wall. Uh huh. Good thing we didn't put the outlet there. I know. Yeah. There's no way. Uh, and so um, I drilled through the cabinets, and then what we're gonna do is so I got HDMI. So we're gonna put the Apple TV. We're gonna put an outlet up here in this in this one, and I think the power cord might reach if we put it up high. So I think yeah. that'll reach the bottom of the TV because the TV is gonna go like here, and then the power is like here. So we should have enough room to pull it through. And so Apple TV will go in there. And I think 
We'll see if the Apple TV, worst case, I'd rather have the Apple TV hidden and open the door if I had to, but it, it's RF, I think, so it'll probably work through. It's not, a, it's not an IR remote, so it should work, work. And then I've got a HDMI running through and then the center channel wire running through the cabinets. And so we'll tack that up nice and clean once I get all the wiring through here. Um, and do we still need a six meter uh, HDMI cable? No, no, it's already, that's, that, that's that one. Okay. So we're, we're good. All right. So we shouldn't need any extension cords. We shouldn't need any extra things. And then I bought all matching little uh, five watt, little Amazon plugs for all of my lights. So these will go in for all of the, uh, the scan grip stuff. Michelle was like, we can we have some? I'm like, no, get your own. I'm mean, telling you, just go on Amazon and get your own, but get the Apple version for your phones because they lose them. I don't know how you lose them. I've never lost one in my entire life. I have one. And then they, I have to hide it because then they go find it and start using it and then, then it disappears. I put my initials on mine so no one would take it. <laughs> yeah, but you lose your, he loses his too. He's just like Michelle. No, I'm He's not. Just like Michelle. No, he, I'm not. Guaranteed. Sorry. He doesn't want to be, but he is. So <laughs> like, he probably has 15 of them just strewn about. <laughs> no, all I have place. one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a big block for my iPad, uh, my iPad and a regular one for my phone. Mm -hmm. And I have wireless on my, uh, I do have three actually. I have a wireless on my nightstand. Three for each. Three for each, shut up. You're so wrong. I even zip tied Kate's to her lamp. Somehow it still disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> she must have chewed through it or something. <laughs> chewed through it. <laughs> oh man. I just don't understand it. Uh -huh. Well, you know, it's a good thing you, uh, you bring the family average up, you know. I can't wait for these kids to grow up and get out of here and then I can... <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to have a big house. <laughs> They're going to watch this someday. Like, I'm going to have a big house and Michelle's going to have a couple of rooms and I'll have the rest. And I'm going to have it clean and organized and structured. It's going to be great. I think I was meant to live alone. I'm probably, that would be what's, kind of what I was going to think. Uh, work alone, live alone, drive alone, just everything's yep. alone. Yeah, no, but I have a service team. <laughs> a I have service a, team? I have a chef, like Alfred, you know, like I'm Batman. <laughs> and I'm Bruce Wayne. Well, Batman was pretty well organized. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to have a team. You are hyper organized. It is hard to, it is hard to be around you sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Only because I'm like self-conscious that I you may leave it. It, it turn well, through a bit the wrong way of where the where it's the not working. Not it's, it's not working. So uh, it's working. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I'm pretty good. I don't know why you give me bad time so much. I mean, I need you to stress out a little bit more. Oh, I don't want to stress out. Get a little bit more organized. And shoot, I'm organized enough. Mm -hmm. Now, what stresses me out is I, I want to make everything perfect. That's that's different. It's the work that I'm worried about, not mm. the freaking dust on the tool. Yeah. You're worried about the dust on the tool and the sticky stuff on the cabinets. It's good though. We, we make a complete human between mm. the two of us. I'm pretty complete on my oh, own. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Except for the driving. Yeah. That's why you need a driver. Huh? That's why, well, that's why you're not complete. Mm. I'm in yeah. shop. I'm getting in there. Huh? Mercedes. I'm just gonna S5, get a mine. S550. I'm gonna get a Rolls Royce. There you go. What else? What did we just say we needed? We needed the plates for the. Oh, lights. Oh yeah. Lights. So we need six feet worth of light. I'll figure out how to make it. Then two straight yeah. joiners, the jumper from the switch box. We need two jumpers and two switch boxes. How long is the cord on that? Three or six? What? On the end of the switch box the cord to get into the cabinet. Well, that's why I don't think we do a cord. I think you just run a Romax into it. Mm. Yeah. Instead of trying to plug it in. Yeah, we can do that. A hardwire, that's what we talked about, hardwire, and I was just gonna cut the yeah. end off the cord, but yeah. Two switches. <laughs> Jason, he's coming. Can you push the door open? <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy. Straight joiner, two switches, two six inch jumper cables. You know, in a perfect world, I'd like to have matching HDMI. I really would. So let's get a four meter HDMI. Okay. We'll do the VLUX. Just not so much so that it matches color wise, but 
I don't know if that cable is going to handle 8K, you know, mm -hmm. or, or I got you. HDMI VLUX. And that's a, what, so, what length is it? Four meters. Four meters, okay. So when you're doing these cabinets, if you're going to buy these, I, I still think these, like I love these, people just need to know what to expect. And it's, that's where I can help, is that you're, you're buying American-made cabinets and you get things like they forgot the power code at the top of the cabinet well, you know, that kind of stuff. You get a little bit of tolerance. Sometimes you get a little wave in a panel or you get like a little, um, you know, a little weld drip, you know, on the, on the, on the, the cabinet. So you don't have any adjustability of the doors, but you know, these are made for, yeah, they're made for, they're really what they're made for. They're made for a guy that buys it for a department and he's not spending his own money and so they're not generally going to be that discerning that's that's really what it is and so if you're a guy and you're buying it and you're it's not your money then it's a little different such situation you're willing to accept maybe a little more tolerance than you know my us or doing it for us you're doing it for yourself you're spending your own freaking money uh, and so you just need to know that going in, and then you can, I think you can be okay with it. Um, it's kind of frustrating to spend $30,000 on cabinets and have some wonk, but that's, we're entering into, and I've said this many, many times, when you enter into a professional grade, this is what you gotta be willing to accept. It's part of the, part of the game. Well, what I like to do, if it's something really important like this that you can't screw up, you can measure all you want, right? But subtle variances in, you know, the rip fence or, the kerf of the blade or whatever, what I like to do is take a little test cut. <clears throat> now, I, I know I want, I want to remove three and seven sixteenths off of this. So the kerf can vary from blade to blade. So what I did is I made a test cut on this, measured from here to the other side of this cut, which is what I wanted, three and seven sixteenths. So that's what I have. All right, so. There's no easy way to do this. I'm just going to have to do it. This stuff is pretty interesting. It's like, it's like rock. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's, really, it's like, really pressed. Right, it's like short of, it kind of feels like, like a synthetic slate, yeah. yeah it does. The mistake I made, which I've never put tape on anything like this, is it, is it makes it, it leaves a mark. Mm. You can't put any tape on the tape you want to see. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is what we're going to test out here is what's the longevity like? Yeah. Like, is it going to get all smudged up? And it's kind of like, this reminds me of like a matte finished car. Like, if you, once you yeah. shine it, you can't, you can't unshine it. So what we're doing here is we're gonna make a pretty thick bead. That way, hopefully, we'll have some room to adjust the float so we can get our seam. I mean, we're really only gonna be able to see the seam like, like maybe seven, eight inches. And this will hold it? Yeah. Well, we can't screw it to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's good, good, but it looks stupid. It would look stupid. Yeah, now our TV seam is going to help. Yeah. Our TV bracket is going to kind of hold it. Yep. Okay. All right. So we don't talk about this enough. This is by far the best under cabinet lighting system I've ever seen or ever found. The quality is good. I, I think they're probably 80, yeah, they're 80 CRI, so I, I haven't been able to find like a 90 plus CRI version. Uh, but the great part about this is there's no ballast driver. There's no big box. There's no big driver box you need to do like all the others. Like, hey, for the look, you need a big driver. The um, uh, scan grip has some under cabinet lighting stuff. You need a big old driver. And so this, we have a full suite of accessories. It's really not all that expensive. Uh, I want to say this setup is probably, you know, two, three hundred dollars. So it's not a ton of money. Um, I mean, it's expensive for what you're getting, but it's not like a, a boatload of cash. Uh, and so for this setup, the beauty of these cabinets, unlike most of the others, when 
most of the like the Sonics or the Sabers or most will have like each cabinet will have a, a, a frame underneath, and so you have to either run through holes or drill holes or something like that. But with these with these um, these lists, we won't have to do that. And so you have a, we have a joiner. You can make 90 degrees and all that stuff too. So we have a joiner in the middle. I have two 36 inch uh, versions, two 36 inch lights. These are 5K, so it'll match the same color temp as the rest of the garage. And, um, and then we have, there's a couple of different brackets. If you wanted to be a little bit easier, you could do this with, um, with the magnets. I want this to be a little bit more permanent. Not, not, I, I, sometimes I'll accidentally bump the magnets, it'll pop loose. Um, so these are a bracket that snaps in place. And so what we'll have is a setup like this. We'll do, we'll do like one here. One at the joint here, like this, and this will keep it nice and sturdy. So four of these will do the whole, the whole setup. Now these these cabinets have a false bottom, meaning there's a plate here. So right here, this plate is the you know is the bottom of the cabinet, but there's a gap in there, uh, and so we can screw up through here, and it won't affect this because there's it's like double plate. Uh, so that allows us to do these, this more permanent solution here. So I'm going to set it up like this and we're going to screw it in place. I do that one, that one pointing out. And then we'll put this little cap here on the end. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna have to plug it in anyway. All right, so then we have a box a switch. And we're gonna hardwire these. So in a perfect world, I'd pre-wire this, do like a, uh, do like a, um, an actual switched outlet. Uh, but instead, I'm comfortable with, with just, just because this is a block wall and it's real clunky, I'm comfortable with just putting this switch up underneath here. Uh, and so all I have to do is walk over here and turn it on. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take this hardwire piece. So this piece here is going to go into the junction box. It's going to go into this box down here. How much is this paper stone backsplash? I think it was a pretty... It's spendy? Pretty sum of money. So. Yeah. You know, I, I, they make this, you can do countertops out of this, but it's thicker. Yeah. I've never seen backsplash. I never even knew they made it this thin. Well, it cost me 75% less. Oh, yeah. Having the. You don't need thick. Yeah. You know, this. This is a test drawer. This is how I know people have been messing around with my stuff. What? What's that drawer? The marker drawer is the test drawer. Oh, yeah, I brought my own Sharpie. I didn't use yours. I'm saying that that drawer has been rifled through and all the pens will be all messed up. I, 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 I got to get all my grid stuff. So that's, that's going to be my next project is just, I, I just wish the list was so much easier to do. This is what I've got to solve. Like, so you have these cabinets and they have all these great accessories. But like they make it so difficult to one figure it out and then two get it. No problem. Still keeping your number one assistant status alive. Waba was gunning for you though. He's 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 been watching. He's been watching, learning. Learning. Yep. He's just gotta get, you know, I told him, you know, he and I are I gotta stop being keeping dusty tools and his dusty cameras. It's not a par for a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it right there. Actually, I can come up too. Yeah. Right there. Now you come up a little bit if you can. Yeah, that's good. That looks good. This will be the only one that doesn't fall off. <laughs> <laughs> Use the rest of it. I figured it'll go to waste otherwise. <laughs> All right, so backsplash is in. The paper stone is in. I'm fairly happy with how it came out. I mean, it could have could have really gone wonky, but we had everything pretty square, and the cabinets were pretty level. So 
it worked out really nicely. And the seams are, you know, I mean, you can see where a seam is, but there's no gap. Everything's pretty good. So we've got it all setting up there. We'll let it set overnight so it hardens and then, uh, then I can do the wood backsplash tomorrow. Um, so I think for the rest of the day, it's getting, getting a little later. So I'm gonna start working on the under cabinet lighting. Uh, Matt already talked about that, so that's next. And then once that's done, I'll get the other wood backsplash up here probably tomorrow, get that all wired up, and then uh, we'll have to attach it to the countertops and then uh, slide it all in as a unit. And then there'll be some final wiring in the cabinets, but that's, uh, that's tomorrow. Um, the other thing I did yesterday was Matt's getting a new Rivian, so there was a Tesla charger here. So that mounted differently than the Rivian charger. So I had to um, use table saw and make some blocks, uh, cut some blocks out to space this off, add a, uh, a four square box behind it because the, the power comes to the back side of this. Like if it was, it's meant to be surface mount with power already on the wall. So um, the way that was before the, the conduit used to come down to the top of the Tesla charger. So that had changed that a little bit. That took some time. So that's now done, powered. That's on a 50 amp. Um, so I think what else do I have to do? These two cabins tie in and then it's just basically backsplash and countertop and hang the TV and plug everything in and it'll be done. I'm hoping I'll have most of it done today. If not, we'll just, I'll uh, do a few little things on, probably do some things on Monday. Um, Cause this is all very time consuming. When you're doing all these little custom things, everything takes time and I like it to be perfect. So I don't rush through it and that's where we are. So we'll give you an update. I'm gonna get this done and then probably when we get the TV installed and start doing the backsplash. We also installed the under cabinet lighting. We didn't the under cabinet lighting is done, yeah, I forgot. To, uh, yeah, that's all done. So this is all installed. I used the, uh, the clips that we sell. There's magnetic version or screw in version. So we bought, uh, we used the screw in version. We've got a um, the switch box over there that runs into the cabinet, which is where I showed you that's gonna tie into the, to the, uh, to the double duplex um, inside. And then same thing on this side. It's got it, so they're separately switched. So got our switch here, and that comes into the cabinet, ties in and into that uh, double duplex in there. Yeah, I think that's just about covers everything. That's kind of gets you up to date. What else is there? Just a lot of equipment. Oh, I know the other thing I have to do too is the rear speakers. Those are ceiling mount, and I have to run speaker wire from, this is where the NAD's going, in here. So, aesthetically, it's not the greatest thing because it's all block wall. I can't really hide the wire in the wall, the speaker wire, so it's gonna have to go up, kinda tuck behind the fan, up into the attic, then it's gonna carry over. And I'm gonna split it probably eight feet or so apart, back, you know, this is center. So behind me, like, because they're down fire, they're not angled, you know, they're just mount straight in the ceiling. We need to keep them away from the garage door. So when the garage is open, it's not blocking sound. So they'll be probably somewhere in here. I have to see how far the doors come out, but that's one of the thing I have to do. So it all adds up to lots of time. <laughs> anyway, so that's, uh, I think that's where we're at. I don't think, I can't think of anything else we missed. Keep them updated, right? Yeah, I gotta keep you up to date, so. Yep, it's coming together. Looks pretty cool. It's gonna be great when it's done. Very, very custom. Nothing but the best for old Maddie.